Photo the Ninja Cat and the Great Snake Escape by me, Dermot Leary. It's Superb Illustrations by Nick East. Toto is having the best dream of her life. Featuring an enormous pepperoni pizza, a bucket of cheesy pasta, and to finish her furry face buried in a massive tiramisu when she found herself rudely transported back to the cold London night. Crash bang, and while we are at it, wallop! Doesn't even come close to the terrible noise that disturbed the silence of the otherwise sleepy street. It's the kind of night that you or I would be tucked up in bed with an extra blanket and a hot water bottle. The kind of night when no one in their right mind would get out of bed until a lazy winter sun makes it just about okay to face the new day. And that's just rush humans. For cats, pfft, forget about it. No cat would be seen dead getting out of a snuggly bed when it was this cold. They'd never be able to show their furry face in polite cat society again. No, no, no. Best leave it to the foxes and the rats, most cats would say. Let's get some shut eye and we'll see you tomorrow sometime. Maybe 11ish. Which is why Toto was annoyed, tired, and just a little bit scared when she heard the almightiest din coming from the bins outside. Toto looked at her parents. They'll sort this out, won't they? She thought. Haven't even moved a muscle. Weren't even stirring. Honestly. She muttered to herself, who are the cats and who are the humans here? We're supposed to be the ones who sleep all the time and you are supposed to be the ones that get us food, pet us, lavish us with attention, groom us, open doors for us, turn the taps on for us to drink water, ma massage our feet and most importantly get up when there are scary noises outside. It's a fair deal. But to recap, we are supposed to be the sleepers. She looked over at her brother Silver who, as the name suggests, had silver and white fur and a big bushy tail and white paws. There he is. Toto, on the other hand, was a big ball of black, grey and brown fur, especially with a winter coat on. She had a ruff around her neck which made her look like a cat and wouldn't be out of place in Elizabethan England, as opposed to where she's really from, a place called Puglia in the heel of Italy. She and Silver were stray cats and had arrived in London only three weeks ago after they were rescued by two kind humans who they're now called Mum and Dad. Or as Toto and, uh, and Silver would say, Mama and Papa, the ones who are currently snoring in the bed. Silver, whispered Toto, Silver, did you hear that? I think it was from outside, in the bins, our bins. Didn't hear a thing, said Silver, yawning and stretching. Yes, you did, you liar. That's why you're awake. Look, this is our house now, and that means this is our turf. We have to go and investigate. <sighs> well, maybe I did hear something, but it could be foxes, said Silver. Just wake it up. Have you seen the size of them? They're not like the countryside ones we're used to. These guys are mean. They are terrifying. Let's just, just stay here and wait for it all to die down. You're scared, said Toto. Well, no, uh, it's just it's a very cold night. Plus the cat flap is a pain to get open. And All right, I admit it. Yes, I'm a little scared. Look, Toto, we've been in this country for three weeks. We're just trying to fit in. It's cold. We're warm-blooded. We're Italian. And now we're woken up by who knows what downstairs. And you're asking me to go and investigate. Why don't you go and investigate? Well, Silver, that could be a little tricky. Remember, I'm blind, said Toto. And Toto had a point. She was as blind as a bat since birth. Actually, that's not totally true. Firstly, they'd already met the neighbourhood bat, Eric. And while she didn't get a chance to have a chat, something about insects that catch no time to stop, he certainly didn't seem blind. And secondly, well, she could see something up close. Her eyesight was just about okay, but from farther away, all she could see were light and dark shapes. She could recognise the outline of things, so like mama and papa, cats, her brother, birds outside. Oh, they look tasty. And anything that moved. She always liked to have silver by her side. Yes, he was a pain at times teasing her like most big brothers, but he was fiercely loyal and loved his sister very much. Not that he would ever say that in public. Yes, yes, I, I know you're blind, but you're also a ninja, remember? Well, now he had a point. Toto was in fact one of the most skilled ninja cats on earth. A member of a select elite club of ninjas with skills she'd learned as a kitten from a master in, Ven in Italy, an old ship's cat called Ventura, who had in, learn in turn learned his skills from his master in Japan who in turn could trace his ninja skills back hundreds of years. In other words, yes, Silver had a point. Toto could look after herself. Well, fine. We'll go together. You for 
your eyes and charm. Silver added, yes and charm, said Toto, rolling her eyes. And me for your deadly ninja skills. Silver finished. Deal? Deal. Silver was right. Ninja or not, that cat flap was a nightmare to get through. Why didn't Mama and Papa just leave the door open? Toto and Silver had grown up in an olive grove, so any door or cat flap based scenario was still a little bit odd to them. But once they were out, it was simple enough. Short hop across the garden, over the wall, and they arrived at the front of the house where the bins were kept. In the inky darkness, the moon lit up an enormous figure, twice the size of both of them. Its top half was dangling precariously over the bin while its frankly shapely bum and legs dangled in the night air. So, Toto whispered as they hid behind a car in the driveway, definitely not a fox. Toto, you can't see. How can you be so sure, replied Silver. Don't be rude. I see shapes, images, lights, darks. And these, she said, angrily, angrily pointing to her ears and whiskers. Well, they're not there for show, you know. I can sense things. Besides, does it look like a fox to you? <sighs> well, no, said Silver. It's not exactly fox-like, but for the life of me, I have no idea what it is. Too big to be a rat. Surely too fat to be a cat. As it surfaced from the bin, with bits of food around its mouth, the mystery became clearer, but only just a little. The animal had light brown fur and was dressed in a tweed jacket with a pork pie hat and a red cravat tied around its neck. Toto and Silver looked at each other, confused. Was it a cat, after all? It had to be. Just a very odd, enormous one. One thing was for certain, it was making such a racket, it wasn't exactly trying to hide. I think it's one of us, whispered Toto. Shame, said Silver. I could have done with a rat sandwich after it as a midnight snack. Best thing about London, all the rats to eat. Yeah, yeah, very, very true, yeah. Or rather, muttered the creature to itself, this nosh is extraordinary, top drawer. This has to be one of my favourite bins in London. Lovely mackerel bone, a nice bit of a old pate, a little morsel of brie. Toto and Silver peeked around the car and then crouched back down, even more confused with before. What is he on about, whispered Toto. Beats me, beats me, said Silver. He's enjoying himself now. But it's our bin, said Toto. This is our front garden. Toto, said Silver, do you really want to eat out of a bin? We're on Easy Street here. We get three meals a day out of a tin. A tin, Toto. We're pampered, we're worshipped, we're adored. Our buddies back in Italy would kill for this. And you're worried about a stinky bin. Well, fine. He's on our turf. So let's go and check him out, said Toto. Right behind you, said Silver. As far as silent and deadly stalking goes, Toto was an expert, even for a cat. Thanks to her ninja training, she could move almost silently. Thanks to her whiskers, she always knew exactly where she was, and thanks to her exceptional hearing, she could detect any movement on a kilometre basis. She was so silent, she was practically invisible. Sadly, the same couldn't be said for her brother. Toto was about to say, listen, when we get over there, here's what we should do. But she was interrupted by Silver tripping up on a small shrub. How is that possible? thought to herself. It'd be easier not to trip up and landing on Toto's back, sending them both sprawling to the feet of the mystery intruder. Bah! The intruder yelled as he jumped two metres into the sky. As he landed, an extraordinarily long thin tail shook out from beneath his tweed jacket before disappearing again. Now here's a thing, said the creature, looking down at him. Two cowards creeping up on me to rob me while I enjoy my supper from my own bin. What have you got to say for yourselves? Well, well firstly, it's not your bin, said Toto. She scrambled out from underneath her brother. And secondly, we've just moved here from Italy, but this is our front garden. We don't take too kindly to other cats on our turf. Right, Silver? Silver? She turned around to see her brother tucking into a half-empty yoghurt pot. It's been spilt in all the commotion. Silver! Oh, absolutely. What she said. Mamma mia, I love yoghurt, he said to no one in particular. His head now buried in the pot. Ah, right, of course. The intruder spluttered, looking a bit shifty. Well, as you can see, I am a cat. I had no idea that other cats have moved in, so I suppose I'll just take the claim to this bin. No harm done. Like you said, we're all cats. So, you know, there's half the cats. Now, I take it this young man, with his face stuck in the yoghurt pot, is silver, which makes you... Toto, she answered, a little bit surprised by how charming this odd-looking cat was. And you are... Young lady and sir. Welcome and allow me to introduce myself. 
you have the pleasure of making the acquaintance of Alexander Rethanov the 33rd. But you find people, they address me as all my dear friends do. My name is Catface. Catface, Toto and Silva said together. Yes, you're a cat. Call Catface. Yes. I hope you don't think we're being rude, said Toto, but that's a strange name. Your face obviously looks like a cat because you are a cat. Ah, well, you are recent arrivals in London, but rest assured it's very common, in fact, all the rage in polite feline society to call your kitten a cat face. A fine name, he said, pulling his cravat and looking a little bit nervous. To say so, Toto muttered to Silver. Anyway, now we've made each other's acquaintance, nay, friendship. Let me just enjoy this last bit of delicious brie. Ah, stinky. Toto and Silver looked at each other and shrugged. Lovely. So, my young friend, said Catface, licking the last of the cheese from his chops. You've just moved here. What do you make of your new hometown? Have you seen the Crown Jewels, Buckingham Palace, Number 10, Downing Street, uh, London Zoo? Some fantastic beasts there, although they might be slightly partial to a small flea feline stack such as yourself, so probably best avoided. Well, come on, I can't wait to hear your first impressions. Toto and Silva looked at him blankly. Well, what is it? said Catface. No idea what you're talking about, said Silva. Catface looked aghast. You mean you haven't been given a tour? By anyone? No, we've just been playing, chilling, watching TV. Our parents watch a lot of nature programs. Some of the cats on there are massive, said Silva. Well, this is a disgrace, said Catface. It is, however, your lucky night. I'm registered with the Guide of Cat Tourist Guides. Why, well, only last week I gave a guided tour to a Belgian foreign, uh, Belgian foreign minister's cat, Edlelia, a lovely Russian blue. And tonight, after that delicious meal from your bin, I'm indebted to you. So I'm free for the next few hours to show you this glorious city of ours. What say you? Well, it really is cold outside and you might get in trouble, Silver Mega. We'd love to, interrupted Toto. Where do we begin? We begin, of course, with a journey to central London. Righty-ho. And how do we get there, said Toto, as they headed off down the street. Like any self-respecting Londoner, Dago, replied Catface, we shall take the tube.